let's you'll have to help me so that we can figure out what happened or where we are so did did you all see this slide who's behind the information who's the author yeah okay so we have to know their perspective the other thing we have to know okay and yeah Okay, we have to know who's the author. We have to know who produced the article. What's the difference between producing and writing? Anybody? Mariah? Well, the author wrote the article. The producer, like, checks the article? Is that? Yeah, sort of. Um, Yeah, sort of. Um, in the case of uh, this article, there's actually a video attached to it. So there's a producer. Um, I think it'll make more sense when you see the article. And then here's a question that I'm going to ask you to think about. What is the authority of the author? And when we ask about authority, we're asking about trustworthiness. You know, like what makes the author trustworthy to speak on a topic? Um, what makes them credible? Um, what are the author's credentials, their background or their expertise? We knew that um, Christoph was credible because he's a columnist for the New York Times. So we can kind of trust him that the New York Times has checked his facts and made sure that he didn't say anything false. And so we might be more prone to trust him. Um, Callie Linfor seemed trustworthy because she was just so honest and vulnerable. And uh, Bronson Koenig seemed trustworthy because he was talking about his own experiences. So we wanna think about what is the authors or the organizations authority behind this? And then that question that Ezekiel asked, what is the organization or the author's motives for presenting this information? Okay. Now I'm going to stop the, sh oh, let me show you the next slide. Um, I'm going to send you into the breakout rooms and I want you to skim the article. And then I want you to think, you know, like, what is it about? And then I want you to ask the questions. You can take notes on the slides. And the slides will look like this. So at the top, you'll have the link to the article. And then here are the questions. You know, like what person or organization sponsored the website? Who's the author? Who produced it? What's their authority? Oh, and what's their motives? That should actually be an extra slide but, or an extra question, but you'll be able to do that, okay? So stop share. Let me put the link for the slideshow in the chat. And you'll be able to write on this slide. Only write on the slide that is your slide. So you'll need to know what group you're being sent into. Why can't I open the chat? Ah, here we go. So that is the slide deck link. So take note of the group that you're sent into. And I'm going to give you about 10 minutes to work on this exercise. That'll give you some time to skim, read the article. And remember, there's a link to the article in the slideshow. Okay. Let me send you into your rooms and. There you go, about 10 minutes. Okay, so let's 
So let's take a look at these questions because they're important questions. You know, like we want to know who's behind the information. Um, oh, here's what I have to do. I have to get stop share. I can't see any of your answers, but there's a reason for that. Um, let me go. I know you would think I would remember this after a while. Um, some of you wrote on your slides, some of you, yeah. Okay, so let's, um, let me change the, your, the permissions because I don't want anything to change now that we've written on the slides. So a uh, group, group one, what person or organization sponsored the website or created the information? We wrote the Embassy of Japan. Yes, it is the Embassy of Japan. Um, and that's important to know. What do you know about the Embassy of Japan? Um, they promote Japan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they promote Japan. That's uh, Wait, really? they're the representative of the Japanese government oh, wow. to the United States, and they promote Japan. Yeah, um, and so I don't know why I can't. Oh, here we go. Um, what? 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 Oh, I know what I did. Yeah, they're all number, named number one. Sorry about that confusion. So who's the author, group two? Taylor, who's the author of this article? Um, I was just looking. I we we got a little confused, and we didn't actually start reading the article until right before we got called back into the. Okay, no problem. Um, Lori, who's the author of this article? Um, I wasn't really able to figure that out. I put question mark for it. But... Yeah, at, at the, in reality, there is no author named. What does that mean if there's no author named? I feel like it just makes it less credible because you can't really see what the person who wrote it, like their background and see if they're a credible person. Yeah, it's hard to assess a credibility of an author, but I, I want to talk about what it means when there's no author named because obviously somebody wrote it. Um, we just don't know who that somebody was. So if somebody wrote it and the Embassy of Japan sponsored it, well, then we know that the Embassy of Japan paid somebody to write it. And they gave them the information and the author is representing the Embassy of Japan, which is representing the country of Japan. And so the author is going to do what the embassy of Japan and the government of Japan wants them to do. So who produced this article? Group four? I, we only got past like the two first um, questions, but um, I wasn't too familiar with who did publish it, but now that I, I've seen what others put what you're talking about, how they, you know, how it was been published it is the Washington Post because it's on that website as well. 
but it doesn't specify who specifically published it, I guess. But, so here, yeah. Let's take a look at the website. Um, so the content is from the Embassy of Japan, and you all caught that. If we put our cursor over this eye, we can see this content is paid for by an advertiser and published by the Washington Post WP Brand Studio. The Washington Post newsroom was not involved in the creation of this content. And so automatically, we know that this looks like an ad, it reads like an ad, or it looks like a news article, it reads like a news article, but it's actually an ad. What does that tell you that this is an ad and not a normal news article? Um, group two? That it's being paid for as propaganda to like show the rest of whoever the readers are what the cherry blossom is. And I actually clicked on the very bottom link, which was like um, view more, I believe. And it gives a little more information as to like why the trees were gifted. But I think um, that page is more of like, so you can come and visit Washington, I believe. Yeah, it totally is. Um, so that might be one of the motives is to get us to sign up for the Cherry Blossom event emails. Um, they can give you more information. We could go to the 2018 National Cherry Blossom Festival. Um, yeah, definitely. I think there's another motive too. Um, let me go back to the website. Professor? Um, yes. I was also gonna say that um, I looked on the ja official Japanese embassy's website and there was nothing for this article under their recent press the year of like 2018. Um, yeah, it, it isn't press, it's an ad. Um, and normally ads are to sell something or sell a way of thinking. If we go to the WP Brand Studio, we will see that WP Brand Studio is all about selling things. So what is the motive of this organization or of this ad? obviously to get us to go to the festival. Um, is there another motive, do you think? The article talks about how America and um, Japan share values like democracy, market-based econ economics, respect for human rights. The article talks about how Japan has invested $424 billion. It's supporting 860,000 American jobs. It's the number one job creator in the U.S. It pays 80000 per year. What is the author doing here? What is the embassy doing here? Ezekiel? I'm just going to throw out a guess that I have, that they're trying to promote that Japan is a huge part of the economy, maybe for, for the United States. And they're supporting jobs. They're trying to show that Japan is has a huge part in helping the US. That's how I understood it. Yeah, and so their motive is to cast Japan in a very positive light, to get Americans who read the Washington Post to really value Japan. And of course, Japan isn't creating 860,000 jobs out of the goodness of its heart for the American people, it's also good for Japan. And so there's some motive there. What is their authority, their credibility, their expertise that they can give all of this information? Here's this lovely little infographic right here with some of the key details. 
Can we trust them that these details are correct? What do you think? They have pretty good authority, the ability to access all of this data. And so I tend to trust it. They have that expertise, but they might leave out some details, some statistics, some information that might cast Japan in a negative light. It's, it might be biased. Definitely, Brian, you're right. Um, but we're gonna use the word perspective. Their perspective and their motive is to further strengthen the relationship of the United States with the relationship of Japan. And so their perspective is to cast our relationship in a really positive light and to leave out anything that might even be a little bit negative. And so that should raise our attention. It doesn't mean it's false information. It just means if we were using this ad as evidence in an article, we would want to be asking a lot more questions. And so it doesn't mean the information's false, it just means there's some motive behind there that might make them, an, it might make them biased, it might make them present information slanted in a way that leads us to think a different way. So, you're going to do this same exercise on two articles in the discussion board. And your focus is on like, where did the information come from? Um, you're going to actually look at a couple of articles published in the Atlantic Monthly about climate change, okay? It's 9.04, I've kept you longer than I'm supposed to keep you or then I agreed to keep you. And thank you so much for all your participation. And yeah, that's all I've got. You are free to go if you want to. Um, I'm gonna sit around here for just a few more minutes.